Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. So today is going to be a Panasonic day and a lot of it's gonna be rumors, but we just wanna talk about what could come with this brand new Panasonic full frame mirrorless that they're working on. So I wanna go through some specs. What I found interesting here is the press conference is gonna be just before Photokina, right around the 25th. We're seeing here T minus six days and counting. And it should be interesting. Now, Nikon came up with the slogan, mirrorless reinvented. And that kind of bit them in the butt a little bit, right? It was, I think, just overstated. It was just a little bit much. Now, Panasonic's slogan is changing photography. So whenever we see these slogans, we always have to ask ourselves, are they going to be able to really hold water or are they going to be a little bit much too pushed and then later on bite them in the butt? So we'll see what ends up happening with Panasonic. Now, what I want to do is I want to go through the specs as of today, what is out there in the rumors as far as what has been heard down the grapevine. Now, take it all with a grain of salt. Some of this stuff's going to be right. Some might be wrong, but it's it's just for a discussion that we can have about this brand new player, right? Now we have Sony, we have Canon, we have Nikon, and now Panasonic. So very, very interesting. Let's get right into these specs, these rumored specs, right? Now they're saying that the prototype of this unnamed Panasonic full frame mirrorless camera will be coming out on the 25th, the same day as that conference. They also said that it's gonna have a brand new sensor and that sensor might be made by Panasonic and could possibly be 50 megapixels 8K. Is that going to be the case? We really don't know. I think that it's gonna be more right around 40 to 45 megapixels, but we will see. Also, full frame non-crop readout at 4K. That's 24P, 25P with no pixel binning. That would be great. I don't see that to be a problem considering that this is going to be a video beast. We know Panasonic does video very well, so I think that they can do it. Also, they're saying that internal 4K 10-bit 422 recording at 60p is going to be possible. I'm thinking that that's probably going to be cropped at 60p. I don't see that they're going to be able to write that much data 422 to a card, but we'll see. Also, clean raw HDMI 4K. That's going to be the norm right across the board. You're going to need some type of external recording device to be able to get that. Also, two card slots. That makes sense. Everyone's wanting them. I don't see why Panasonic wouldn't put them in. Now, are they going to be CF cards, CF Express cards? Are they going to be the fast SD cards? We don't know as of yet. Remember, whenever you go CF, the real estate that they take up is a lot more. They're thicker. It's a bigger card. Whereas the SD are thinner cards, but they're a little bit less, let's say, durable as people call them. I personally like them, but one or the other, throw it up in the air, whichever one fall, hits the ground first is fine with me. I've taken CF cards and washed them in my pockets and I've also taken SD cards and washed them and dried them and pulled them out and they still work today. So they're okay. Also, no IBIS, no in-body image stabilization, which is which makes sense to me because we're now dealing with a full frame. We're not talking about a little micro four thirds sensor. We're dealing with a full frame sensor. It's a lot. It is definitely a lot. They're gonna have a lot on their plate with this. Well, we'll get into that more later. Now, as far as lenses goes, I think that they're gonna have brand new full frame lenses, but there was a rumor out there that says that since they have a really good relationship with Leica, they could possibly use a Leica SL mount on this camera, but which way they go with it, I really don't know. Now, it said that the audio adapter is going to be very similar to a GH5 and a GH5S with maybe some additional controls, which makes sense. Also, it should be a weather sealed body and it's gonna have a headphone jack, a mic jack, a USB-C jack, of course, so you can charge your batteries internal to the camera and you have that high speed connection and of course your HDMI out. Also, they're saying the flash will double as a time code sync, just like with the GH5, GH5S, I believe. So that is interesting. And the price is going to be right around $3,000. So it's going to be around the price of a Sony A7R3 or the Nikon Z7, but not like a Z6 or a Canon EOS R or even a Sony A7 III. So it's going to have to be on par with those big boys right out the gate. 
And it's expected to be released, in other words, hit the road or hit the shops, right around March of next year. So let me give you some of my thoughts about the brand new full frame mirrorless from Panasonic. Let me start out by saying that I have a very good relationship to some of the upper management in the photo area of Panasonic USA. And we've gone back and forth over the years. And I have said that, you know, I think that the Micro Four Thirds days are numbered and they we're not very happy with me. I just think that they've pushed the hell out of this sensor and they've gotten so much out of it. But there's a finite amount that you can get out of something that's very small. There's a time when the signal to noise ratio just gets to be crazy. The heat becomes crazy. And there's only so much that you can do. I said, why don't you go larger, right? Go a little bigger. And I remember them saying, oh, no, no. Listen, there's luminaries and there's all of our ambassadors just crushing it in the professional field with these cameras. You don't need to go bigger. Micro Four Thirds is big enough. And then literally about a year later, we saw that the GH5 went from the sensor that they have in the GH5 to the GH5S, and the sensor was slightly bigger. It was bigger than a Micro Four Thirds. Now what has happened? Now they want to get into the full frame mirrorless game. Why? Because I do think Panasonic understands that Micro Four Thirds days are numbered. Now, I do think that, like I said, they've pushed the heck out of this sensor. But by them moving to full frame and circumventing the APS-C market, okay, going from Micro Four Thirds straight to full frame, there's going to be a ton of growing pains that will happen. The same type of growing pains that happened with the other manufacturers. Sony, for example, the last five years, a ton of growing pains. Canon and Nikon are gonna feel the same, especially when it comes to battery issues, when it comes to heating, autofocus, when it comes to IBIS. Chances are there will be no IBIS in this camera. It's a big sensor, okay? It's gonna take a lot of processing power to be able to do all of this stuff internally. Now, that being said, can they do it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Panasonic does really great things with video. So I think this is going to be a video beast and I think they're going to make it into that. So do I have really good expectations for this? Do I really think that it's going to be a great camera? Yes. Would I purchase a Gen 1 Panasonic full frame knowing that they're coming from a mirrorless Micro Four Thirds and there's going to be a ton of growing pains? Probably not. I would let the dust settle for a year or two and then pick it up. But regardless, it's an interesting play. It shows that we all know, and I've said this, and it's finally coming to fruition, Full frame mirrorless is where it is at. That's where everything is going. Eventually, DSLRs are going to go the way of the dinosaur. Absolutely. Everything will be mirrorless. And I do believe Micro Four Thirds is going to go away also. Panasonic is holding up Micro Four Thirds right now. I would say they're probably the biggest seller of Micro Four Thirds. And if they move into full frame and see that that really just takes off, I see them dwindling the Micro Four Thirds a little bit, making a lens here and a lens there, not shutting it down, absolutely not. Because there's a lot of people that use Micro Four Thirds, and rightfully so, because they need something small for a camera bag for traveling or whatnot. Can you use it for video? Absolutely, I've told you guys in the past, People that I know use the GH5S for, for filming, for doing 15 second, 30 second ad spots for TV. So it is a capable camera. But they've also said that we struggle with autofocus and we struggle with light. That will all be solved, hopefully, with this brand new camera that will be full frame. Anyways, guys, if you are going to be at Photokina, in Cologne. It will be happening September 26th through the 29th, and I believe Panasonic will be in Hall 3.2. So definitely visit them, all right? Go by and check it out. Once again, it will have a prototype there, not the full-blown camera. 
If I remember correctly, Panasonic did the same thing for the GH5 or the GH5S. They put a prototype under glass during Photo Plus Expo one year. So Panasonic does that a lot and they get a buzz for what people are liking and what they're not liking. I think they make those revisions after that. Because remember, September to the release date, supposedly March, you know, you're looking at close to five, six months later, they have time to be able to make revisions to the product. So anyways, guys, Guys, that is it. I hope you enjoyed my content today. As always, if you have, please throw me a big thumbs up and smash that subscribe button so you can get all my content when it becomes available and click the bell icon so when it is available, you will be notified of it. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me. That's it for yet another vlog. We'll see you in the next one. Happy shooting, guys. Take care.